guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to my fantasy romance reading vlog. This video has been a long time coming. I am so, so excited to read the books that I have planned for in this vlog. The three books that I'm going to be reading in this vlog are The Bridge Kingdom, Zodiac Academy, the first book I believe is called The Awakening, and then the third book will be City of Gods and Monsters. Those are all three like highly anticipated fantasy romances that I want to read. Fantasy romance is just truly like my favorite genre and I am very much in my Kindle Unlimited romanticy era. So I will probably be doing more of these vlogs because there's a lot to go through. I really wanna get into the genre and just find what my favorites are. I'm so excited to be making this video. If you guys did not see my April TBR, I sort of talked about this a little bit in that video, but I have been like, sticking to a very strict TBR the last few months that I pick out at the beginning of the month. And because I am such a mood reader, inevitably what I want to read kind of changes a few weeks into the month, but I've been sticking with my original TBRs. And so I've kind of been like, not really reading what I want, even though at the time, when I make the videos, it is what I want, but then things change. And I am just so happy that I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. I'm just going to be doing much more casual TBRs, reading whatever I want. And literally as soon as I made that like shift in mindset, I am feeling so much lighter and happier and excited to be reading. What a concept. Yeah, and all I wanna read is fantasy romance. So that is why this vlog is happening. So the first book that I'm going to be reading is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. I actually started this last night. I'm really liking it so far. I bought this book, The Physical copy like a year ago and then I saw like two people give it bad reviews and I unhauled it which is so embarrassing for me honestly like I can't believe I did that I was just so easily influenced and I was like oh these I don't even remember who it was who said they didn't like it but I just saw a few people say that it wasn't that great I think they gave it like two stars I immediately just got rid of it I am kicking myself now though because as I said I started it last night and I'm really liking it so far I would say it's in like 3.5 to 4 star territory at the moment so this is just like a PSA don't let people influence you to not read things because you need to try them out for yourself I definitely learned that also with the Cruel Prince series I never had any intention to pick that series up because I've seen so many people say that they don't like it and then I find Finally decided to and it's like one of my favorite series I've ever read now so yeah I, I can't believe that I did that I can't believe that I did that honestly anyway if you don't know what the bridge kingdom is about it follows a princess named Lara and she has been from birth raised to be a warrior and fight on behalf of her kingdom she is selected to go and marry the rival kingdoms prince and then they will become the king and queen of Ithacana which is a part of the bridge kingdom so her and her father's plan is to infiltrate the opposing kingdom's castle kill the prince Arryn uh, and take over there's been a lot of political tension between the two kingdoms and Lara's kingdom has been suffering at the hands of the bridge kingdom however i believe once she gets there she's going to realize that maybe her father's kingdom are the bad guys and the bridge kingdom isn't actually that bad that is what it says in the synopsis i don't know yet this is an enemies to lovers fantasy romance which i'm so excited for enemies to lovers i feel like works the best in fantasy novels so i'm super excited to see how that plays out so far we have met lara we have met prince Arryn. they already got married they the very first time they saw each other they got married so they've gotten married she has moved in with him and they haven't interacted too much. Prince Arn is interesting. He is like super laid back and chill and doesn't really care to be married, doesn't really care to interact much with Lara. He kind of just sees it as his duty. He seems like he didn't really want to get married, but his parents who have now passed did promise Lara's father that they would marry their children off together. So he's upholding that agreement, but he's been interesting so far. He was going to be like this intense alpha, you know, royalty asshole, but he's been, he's been pretty nice so far. I've liked him. Lara is pretending to be very innocent and doesn't want to reveal that she is like a fighter and is very skilled. And so far, I think Arryn is believing it. He seems to think that she's pretty innocent and she's just letting him believe that. Her next plan basically is to seduce him into submission and make him think that she is just like going to be a really chill wife. And then she's planning to kill him. Don't know how that's going to go. I'm really excited to see how they go from enemies to lovers because right now things are very chill between them. There, there hasn't even been like much talk about being attracted to each other so but I'm excited to keep reading I'm really liking it like I said I could see myself giving this book four stars so I'm excited I'm, I'm ready to see what happens I'm ready to see some drama that's all I really have to say on that I would like to finish this book today if possible if not I'd at least like to get to the 75% mark it does read very quickly so I think that I can do that 
but I think I'm gonna dye my hair because I am not looking very raven haired reader at the moment. I am looking very brunette haired reader, so I need to dye my hair. But I will check in with you guys in a little bit when I have an update on The Bridge Kingdom. Hey guys, so checking in, I actually finished The Bridge Kingdom last night. I was going to update you guys before I finished it, however, I just found The Bridge Kingdom to be really boring and disappointing, honestly, so I just didn't really have much to say. This book has a lot of hype. I've heard a lot of amazing things about it, and I just didn't really didn't really love it. Last time I checked in with you guys, I had just started and I was at like the 10 or 15% mark and the book was going really well at that point. There was so much action in the beginning. We learned about Lara's background. She got to the Bridge Kingdom. She ended up marrying Prince Arryn. They became king and queen of Ithacana. Like so much happened in the first 10% of this book, which was great. But then things slowed down like immensely at this point and I was super bored for the rest of the book pretty much. There were some good moments throughout, which is why I did end up giving it three stars, but I would say overall, this book was very lackluster. One of my biggest issues was this book is definitely presented as enemies to lovers, and they're definitely not enemies. Like, they're just two people who don't really know each other that well. They have all the reason to be enemies. Like, I feel like the ingredients for a very good enemies to lovers was there, but it was not executed, which is disappointing. Also, Prince Arryn, or now King Arryn, I guess, he was so, like, flat as a character. I feel like we got nothing about him. In the beginning, we did get that he was not super interested in being king. He wishes that his twin sister would just take over as queen and like he could just be a hunter and hang out with his friends. That was all great. Wish we dove more into that. We didn't. And also, I just feel like Lara and Arryn did not really spend a lot of time together in this book. And when they did, it's just, I feel like we could have done so much more. We could have gotten so many more really cute moments. There was like no tension between them at all, in my opinion. And there was just so much talk about the political strategy and, you know, the different sort of alliances between the realms. Like there was so much of that. And I just, I don't care. Like I'm reading this for the relationship. I'm reading this for the characters. I'm not interested in the plot. Danielle L. Jensen knows why we are here. I'm just, I'm disappointed. I gave it three stars. I am probably going to continue on with the series, but just not now. I just don't really feel a desire to pick up the next book yet, but I feel like one day I could be kind of bored and be like, oh, I want to pick up the Traitor Queen and just see what happens with Lara and Arryn's story. But overall, kind of a disappointing read and definitely not like a great way to start this fantasy romance reading vlog, but Oh well, is what it is. However, I am very excited because the next book I'm going to be reading is the first book in the Zodiac Academy series, The Awakening. If you guys watched my April TBR, you will know that I did start this book back in September, but I DNF'd it around the like, I don't even know, like 20% mark maybe. Not for any particular reason. I was just super busy at that time and I could not focus on this book. So I just put it down, forgot about it. But now I've just been seeing so many people talk about it lately. Like I swear every day I am seeing people post on their Instagram story about this. I see people having like full on breakdowns about what happens in like books four, five, and six. I think that they have very intense cliffhangers. I have not been spoiled for the series at all. So I have no idea what happens. So I'm super, super excited. And I honestly don't even really remember from when I read it in September, like the things that happen. I kind of remember the first chapter and that's about it. So I am going to start reading the Zodiac Academy and I will check in with you guys in a little bit and tell you guys what I think. So doing a little check-in, it is the next day. I started the Zodiac Academy last night and oh my God, I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I am loving it. I had to stop myself and slow down so I didn't read like most of the book last night so I could do a check-in with you guys because this book is just so, so good. Like. I immediately loved it. It was so easy to get into and I'm so glad that I ended up picking this up and wasn't like turned off by the talk of bad writing or anything like that. I will say kind of my first impressions of the book are the writing. It's not like 
bad writing. I don't know. That, that can be subjective, I guess. It's not bad. There's just like some cringy, you know, choices made, I would say. And I kind of just look past those. I think if you're going into this book, you should just know that like the writing is a little strange, little silly goofy sometimes, but I absolutely think it's worth it. I'm loving the story and I am loving the characters. I sort of talked about what this book is about yesterday and so far we have met Tori and Darcy, the twins. They have been told that they are heirs to a fey throne in Solaria, so they need to go to the Zodiac Academy to hone their skills and they end up being very powerful because their lineage is very strong, so it was kind of expected that they would be very, very powerful and they are just now dealing with the four heirs who don't want them to take their throne back and want to keep it for themselves, which their interactions with the heirs have been so crazy. I will definitely say the series is advertised as a bully romance and that is like just scratching the surface, honestly. It's pretty intense, so I would say if you are not somebody who likes bully romance, I don't think you're going to like this book. You should really know going into it, it's like a big part of the story. As of right now, the heirs treat Tori and Darcy pretty poorly, so I'm going to keep reading this on my Kindle. But I think I want to go take a walk to the bookstore today because it is 70 degrees in April in Seattle, which is like it's unheard of. It's like how other people would react to it being like 85 degrees in April, honestly. So I want to go outside, get some much needed vitamin D, and I think I want to walk to the bookstore. I live like two minutes from my Barnes & Noble when I drive, so I feel like I could walk there in like 15 minutes, pick up a few books. I know that I want to pick up the physical copy of the first book in the Zodiac Academy series. Last time I was there, they did have it, so I definitely want to pick that up. And then I also want to get Kingdom of the Cursed, which is the second book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I read the first book last month and I liked it. I gave it three stars, but I have heard that the second book is way better. So I want to continue on with that series as well. So I think I'm going to go for a walk, go book shopping, and I will check in with you guys uh, when I get back and let you know what I bought. And yeah, I'm just, I'm loving the series so much. I seriously think I am going to binge the Zodiac Academy this month. Like I can't even imagine like where the story goes from here because there are seven or eight books in the series and they're all like over 500 page books. I know the most recent one, I think the seventh book is like 950 pages. And I'm like, what the hell is going to happen? So I'm just so excited. I'm such a series person. I much prefer book series versus standalone books and I just want to like completely spiral in this series. I'll check in with you guys in a little bit uh, and show you my little book haul and once I've read a little bit more of the Zodiac Academy. I just wanted to film a really quick check-in. I have a ferry to catch, so I'm just gonna do this really quickly. I'm going home to visit my family, so I need to get going. The last clip you guys saw, I did go to Barnes & Noble and I was successful. I was able to pick up the first book in the Zodiac Academy, The Awakening, the physical copy, and I also picked up the second book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series, Kingdom of the Cursed. This cover is so beautiful. I am really looking forward to reading this, actually. I have seen a lot of people say that the second book is a little bit better and a little bit more adult than the first book, so I hope that I like it more than the first one. Also, just a quick reading update. I am about 50% of the way done with The Awakening. It's still going great. It's still like so amazing and I'm loving it so much. We have a new plot line which has been introduced and it's very interesting. I don't want to give too much away, but basically there is another species that is killing off the fae species. So there's a threat to everyone and everyone seems really tense and nervous about it. Darcy and Tori, of course, are learning about this species for the first time and the threat that they pose and everything. So I'm very excited by that new plot 
plot line. I think it's going to create even more tension for every single character. So I'm loving it. I'm I'm so happy that I'm loving this book and it's uh, working out well. I also went ahead and bought the entire series on Amazon. I think that's coming tomorrow. I try to not do that when I haven't even finished reading the first book in a series to buy the rest of the series, but I'm loving it. And I just, I know that I'm going to like it even more because everyone says that this book is the weakest in the series. And if I'm already loving it, I'm sure I'm going to absolutely love the rest of it. Oh, I also wanted to say that I did say in the beginning of this vlog that the third book I was going to be reading is City of Gods and Monsters. However, I looked up that book and saw that it is 750 pages. So I will not be reading that book in this vlog because I really want to get this vlog up in a couple days and there's just no way that I can read an almost 800 page book in the next day or two. I will be reading that book this month though so if you want to see my thoughts on it you can definitely check out my April wrap up when that is posted because I am really looking forward to it. It's marketed as like a House of Earth and Blood, Cassandra Clare type of book and it sounds great. I'm really excited for it but I just don't think I'll be able to fit it into this vlog. I do need to figure out the third book that I'm going to be reading for this video because I do want to fit in one more before I get this one posted. Oh and and also, I just started my bookstagram. So if you guys could go follow me on Instagram at ravenhairedreader, it is the same username as my YouTube username. That would be awesome. It is mostly going to be like bookish content and like regular bookstagram style posts, but I will also probably throw in a little bit of lifestyle there as well. And of course, if I ever want to do like a Q&A or ask you guys for book recommendations or video recommendations, it will definitely be going down on my Instagram stories. So make sure that you follow me on there. I just made the profile, so there aren't any posts yet, but hopefully I'll, I'll get posting and I will be consistent consistent on there. All right, guys, so I need to go. I will talk to you guys after I have finished the first book in the Zodiac Academy series and once I figured out what the next book in this vlog is going to be. Hey guys, I have another reading update and it is a very exciting one. I just finished the first book in the Zodiac Academy and that is The Awakening. And just wow, just wow is really all I have to say. I loved this. I devoured this. This was so much fun fun. I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away by this book. I cannot wait to continue on with the series. I haven't had this much fun reading a book in such a long time. This is such a good fantasy romance. Like I'm, I'm in it. I'm so in it. There were so many things about this book that I liked. There are a few things that I didn't love. I just want to say this is not a literary work of fiction, right? But it doesn't have to be to be enjoyable. Here's the thing. I was thinking about this and I think that the way that I love this book. And I think the way that everyone sort of loves the series and is super obsessed with it, it's kind of the same thing as, for example, like The Vampire Diaries, the TV show, right? Is that like the most well-acted, well-written show ever? No, right? Like, no, but it's still so addicting and so good and so much fun and had such an impact on pop culture anyway, even if it wasn't this like amazing, you know, work of television. I feel like the way that myself and many people People are obsessed with a show like The Vampire Diaries or something like that is how I feel about this book and how I feel so many people feel about it because it is addicting. There was not a moment in this book that I was bored. Not a moment. I didn't want to put it down. I just, it was so good. It was so, so good. I cannot wait to see where the series goes. I will say, I rated this book four stars. I was going to give it five stars. However, <laughs> There is a thing, there's a scene, let me put this down to talk about this. There's a scene at the end of this book and no spoilers at all. I will just say, if you have read this book, The Pool, that was horrific. <laughs> like that was horrible. I was dying inside reading that. I was like, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. And then it just, kept happening. That really shocked me. I thought that we were kind of getting away from that type of thing, but then like they really just, you know, put the final nail in the coffin there at the end of the book. So that was a lot. And it did make me lower my rating of the book from a five star to a four star. Don't get me wrong. 
I loved the book. I can't wait to pick up the second one. I am willing to see what the characters do. I, I feel like we've got a big redemption arc coming, or at least we better. But that was, wow, that was wow. And I was just not expecting it. And it was like, it was a lot. That scene was a lot. And what a way to end a book, honestly. Caroline and Susan, what a way to end a book. But uh, I still really enjoyed it regardless. And you know what's interesting? So as this is like a fantasy, you know, romance series, we know that Darcy and Tori, the two main characters, are obviously going to end up with one of the cast of characters that we've met so far. I'm like 100% positive that I know who each of them are going to end up with. Like I'm, I know that they're going to end up with these characters. And I'm kind of like, wow, it's going to be a journey to get there. After that ending, it is going to be an interesting journey on how we're going to get there. That was just brutal. Honestly, that was brutal, but I, I loved the book regardless. Like, even though that was crazy, I can't wait to find out what the explanation for that was because I'm going to need, I'm going to need some explaining in the future books. But anyway, I loved this book so much. I absolutely recommend it if you are a fantasy romance lover, but just know that like, yeah, it's not a literary work of fiction. It's fun. And there's like huge bully romance trope happening in this book throughout the book. So if you're not into that, just maybe skip this one. Okay. So all that being said, I did go ahead and order the entire series on Amazon as one does. You know, I finished the first book in the series and now I just bought the next six or seven, I think. So I'm going to open those and show those to you guys really quick. Okay, so we have, oh my God, this is huge. Shadow Princess, this is book four. Holy camoli, this is a brick. Oh my, okay, I don't even wanna look. Wow, okay, big, very big. So that's book four. These are all out of order. I have like three packages here. Oh my God. This is book six. Holy K. Once again, ginormous. This is why I'm just like, what the hell happens in this series? Like these books are huge. The first one was like 410 pages. That's pretty big on its own. This is ginormous. Oh, I can't, I can't look. I don't want to look. Okay. I almost, I almost looked. I almost read the back. Oh my God. Okay. And then I'm going to need scissors for this one. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's just Amazon packages, so. Oh God. Oh, did you hear that? That was the box slamming onto our kitchen counter. Oh my God. Okay, this is book five. These are so heavy. This is book five. Cursed Fates has the Pisces, uh, Pisces symbol on the front. Wow. And then we have, this is book two. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna read next. This is Ruthless Fay, has Leo on the cover. So I can look at the back of this one, but I'll wait and do that later. Oh my God, okay. And then this is book three. Am I missing one? Wait, okay, this is book three, also big. Wait, am I missing? Did I get books? I forgot to order the last one. Book seven, right? There's seven books out. I mean, I don't need them all right now, but I totally meant to order them all. Dang, okay, I'm gonna have to do that. I will do that right after this. But anyway, I have most of the Zodiac Academy series here. Oh my God, okay, I'll try to show you guys. This is insane. Like what happens? Look at this. Oh my God. These are like, these feel like hardcovers. Anyway, that is all of the books in the Zodiac Academy series, except for book seven. So I don't even know if you guys saw that. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll, sh I'll show it later in like B-roll or something, but wow. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, I absolutely loved the first book was shocked by the ending. My favorite characters are, I love the twins. I think Darcy is my favorite twin. We'll see if that changes, but as of right now, Darcy is my favorite. I love Orion. I loved Orion from the beginning. I knew, like, I just, I knew he was gonna end up being like, I mean, he isn't fully a good person yet, but I can see the direction his character is going. I really like, I think her name is Sophia. I like her. I like Diego, but he acts a little bit weird and seems a little mysterious. So we'll see where his character goes. Max, I'm kind of neutral on. Caleb, I'm kind kind of like mm, neutral on. Um, Seth, not into Seth, not into Seth at the moment. I haven't liked Seth basically from the moment we met him. Yeah, he gives me the ick right now. Hopefully that changes, but he's probably my least favorite of the heirs. And well, 
And then there's Darius, I believe it's pronounced. I don't know if it's Darius or Darius. I'm gonna say Darius. I really liked him. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I, I did really like him at one point in this novel. Anyway, as I told you guys earlier, I'm not going to be reading City of Gods and Monsters as I originally said, because it is so long and I wanna get this vlog up in the next couple of days. So I think I am going to be reading Fortuna Sworn. I believe the author's name is K.A. Sutton and I have the audiobook for that and it's only like 11 hours and I feel like, you know, if I listen to it on two times speed, I can get it done in like, you know, five and a half, six hours. So I'm gonna read that and I'm really excited. I honestly don't really know what that book is about. I think it follows a girl whose brother gets like kidnapped Kidnapped. This girl has to go like fight in these trials in a fey world in order to get him back. I think it's very like Feyre under the mountain in Akatar. That's what people compare it to a lot. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. I love the covers of this book and like every book in this series. So I really hope I like it because I do want to buy the physical books because I think that they are absolutely beautiful. So yeah, guys, that is going to be it for tonight. Um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow when I have a little bit of an update on Fortuna Sworn. Hello. Okay, so the last clip that you guys saw, I was at the gym and that's where I was when I hit 1000 subscribers last night. Thank you guys so, so much. I'm like, I, I can't even comprehend that. That is so, so cool. I'm just, I know that like, you know, a thousand subscribers, there's so many people out there who have way, way more than that, but it's just so cool. And I didn't think that I would hit it at this point. And I'm just like, I'm just mind blown. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. If you have subscribed to this channel, if you've watched any of my videos, I am so appreciative. I also definitely want to shout out Cami from Burrows and Books, Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads, and Sahar from Basically Bookish Reads. All three of them uh, posted about me yesterday because I was so close to hitting a thousand. And I just don't think I would have hit it as quickly without the three of them. So thank you three so much. You guys should absolutely go subscribe to their channels. They are amazing. They are also all three very into fantasy romance. So definitely fitting for this vlog. They're just so amazing. And I'm so grateful to have like met them and just, oh my God. Literally Sahar texted me last night and she was like, I'm out at a bar right now, but I'm asking my friends to subscribe to you because you're so close. And like, that is amazing. She was putting in the work out in the field. Like that was just so good. So, so good. I am so grateful to those three and to all of you. I'm just really, really grateful, really excited to see where things go. So thank you. In less exciting news, I am reading Fortuna Sworn and I am considering DNFing it at this point. I am 20% of the way done with the book and I just, I don't know you guys, it's not, it's not going well. My biggest complaint is it's sort of reading like a YA, like very YA, but it's like with adult themes and matters and subject. I don't know. It's very weird, but I'm not into it at all. I really do not like our main character, Fortuna. And that's, you know, a bit, a bit problematic as she is the main character, the narrator, the one that we are supposed to be caring about. I'm just, I'm not super into it. So far we have met Fortuna. We have learned that she is a type of magical creature called a nightmare. I don't really understand what she is at the moment. Uh, she lives in the human world. She like works at a bar and like whatever. She's just like living her normal life. And then a fae comes and says, hey, like, I can take you to your brother. I can help you rescue him because he went missing many years ago, but you have to marry me, of course. So she agrees to get married to him and they go somewhere. And she, I think, is starting to realize that her brother is hidden underneath somewhere. As I said, very like Feyre under the mountain vibes is what I'm getting. So I think that Fortuna is gonna have to go to where her brother is under this place and compete in trials in order to get her brother back. I just don't really care. I'm just at a point where I'm just like, I just, I'm not into it. It hasn't gripped me. I'm 20% of the way in. And I'm just not, I'm not connecting with anything. I don't want to DNF a book in this vlog, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. This vlog is already, I think like 30 minutes. I've edited it. I have edited it up to this point. I think it's already 30 minutes. So this is probably going to be a long one. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a shot. See what I think. Maybe get to like the 50% mark and see how I feel, but I am potentially DNFing this. So the next time I see you guys, it will either be because I DNFed the book or I finished it or something super amazing happened and I just had to tell you guys about it. So I will check in with you guys in a little bit. I 
DNF'd Fortuna Sworn. I'm sorry guys, I'm really sad that I DNF'd the last book in this reading vlog, but I just couldn't do it. I got to the 20% mark. I was at like the 17% mark, so I really only gave it like a little bit of a shot to see if it would intrigue me at all. It just didn't. As I had mentioned before, my biggest complaint is the writing style. I felt like the main character felt very young YA and just not super enjoyable to read, but then there were very like adult themes within the book. So it was kind of all over the place. And I just felt like the pacing of the book was strange too. I felt like some things were just rushing really, really quickly. And I'm honestly just not intrigued enough at this point to push on. So I am really trying to get better at DNFing books because a lot of times I feel super guilty when I do that. But I think it's important to not waste time reading books that you don't enjoy. And like, wasn't even to the point where I was like, oh, maybe I can like hate read it. Like, I just didn't care. It was just not gripping me at all. So this was the first installment of my fantasy romance reading vlogs. I definitely want to do these on like a pretty regular basis, whether that's once a month or twice a month. I have a ton of fantasy romance books that I want to get to very soon. So in this vlog, I would definitely rank the Zodiac Academy, The Awakening at the top. That was my favorite book that I read in this vlog. I am so excited to continue on with the series. I am contemplating doing like a Zodiac Academy reading vlog, maybe with spoilers. I would love to know if you guys would want that. Are you interested in that? Because I'm obsessed with the series and I think I'm going to start reading the second one like right now. So then after the Zodiac Academy, I would put The Bridge Kingdom as the as my second favorite book that I read in this vlog. Uh, I gave it three stars. I didn't really connect with the characters and I wasn't a super big fan of the plot. Uh, I do think that the romance was lacking a little bit. So overall, that was just like a fine read. And then of course, Fortuna Sworn is getting put at the bottom because I did DNF it. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for this reading vlog. If you made it this far into the video, go ahead and leave the little fairy emoji for this fantasy romance reading vlog. I think a fairy is very appropriate. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are having a great day and I will catch you guys in the next one.